Hello, this is lesson three of Earth's Changing Climate. This is a unit for sixth grade scientists, and the title for this lesson is Investigating Changes to the Atmosphere. And I'm really excited about this lesson because we're going to have a chance to explore the Earth's Changing Climate sim, and it is really cool. It's fun to play around with. Maybe you experienced it a little bit already in lesson one and two, and if you didn't yet, then today we'll have a chance to do more of that. So for this lesson, you will need someone to talk to and something to write on and with you're going to be taking some notes as you're exploring the sim just simple notes and then also you'll need access to earth's changing climate sim from amplify science and if you don't have access to it i'm going to show it to you a little bit in this video and then also i'll have some screenshots so you can see some of the data that the scientists are going to be collecting during this unit all right, let's start this lesson. So one possible cause of the current climate change that's happening on our planet right now could be a change in the atmosphere of our planet. So we're going to investigate on the sim today. We're going to try a bunch of different gases that are in Earth's atmosphere and see if we can use that information to answer this investigation question, which is what kinds of changes to the atmosphere could affect how much energy is absorbed by Earth's surface. So this is a screenshot of the sim that we're going to use. And as you can see, there's a lot of cool things that it can do. But one thing I want to show you is in this panel on the right side of the sim screen. And if you look at it more closely, you can see that there's actually a little button here that you can click on that opens all of these little sort of like shapes in the sky. And those are actually a model of each type of gas. So if you turn on carbon dioxide, this little gas will pop up on the screen. And if you turn on these other ones, you can see that they also will pop up around on the sky. So there's only four gases that are shown in this model. And these are not all the gases that are in the atmosphere. In fact, these are trace gases, which means that there's a very small amount of them. If you look at this right here, it says PPM. That stands for parts per million. So if you had one million molecules of gas, and carbon dioxide is set at 200, that that means that this would be an atmosphere that has 200 parts per million, or for every 1 million molecules of atmospheric gas, only 200 of those molecules are carbon dioxide. So you can see if you look at the sim, they're all start at 200 to start. And what we're gonna do is load up the sim, let it run for about 20 seconds so it reaches equilibrium, and then just make one change per test. We're gonna try increasing by moving it up to 500. We're gonna try decreasing it by moving it down to zero parts per million, and then hit play and let it run until the timer reaches 40. And then observe the temperature, the amount of ice, and the glow of absorbed energy. So once you do that, if you click on the view the graph, so that's this bottom corner right here, you can open the graph. You can actually see the graph a little bit to tell you your data if you can't quite tell what it looks like on the screen. So once you observe the graph and look at the changes again, then record your results. And then be sure to re-hit the sim and then do your next test. Okay, I wanna show you a quick screenshot of what the sim is gonna look like. If you look at this, you can see it records the temperature at the top of the screen. It shows you the amount of ice and also the absorbed energy. And again, if you click on the graph, you can look at that in a graph form, but you can actually see the data right on this picture. Okay, so you get on the sim by going to seattleschools.org and opening Clever. You can do that by clicking here with this blinking orange circle, or you can go to the student family portals and you can find the portal that will take you to Clever there. So once you get on there, then open up Amplify Science. It works best if you're using Chrome and then open up the global navigation menu in the top left corner and scroll down until, until you see science apps and then open Earth's Changing Climate Sim. Okay, let's explore this sim a little bit. It's pretty fun. I'm gonna hit play just so that we can let it run for 20 seconds and reach equilibrium. I love it when I increase it to four because then it goes a lot faster. So I'm looking over here at the time. We're almost there, stop. Ooh. Almost, almost made it, 21's fine. And then I'm gonna increase carbon dioxide all the way up to 500 parts per million. That's a lot, but remember, there's still a bunch of other gas in the atmosphere, most of which is nitrogen. So this is carbon dioxide. We're gonna go ahead and hit play and let it run until the timer hits 40, which is right now. 
And a lot of things happened. One, the surface is glowing a lot more than it was before. And the temperature increased a lot by, you know, significant amount, almost five degrees. And also we can click on the graph here if we want to see that a little bit better. We can see, yep, there was increase in temperature and uh, the surface ice went down and it looks like there was, yep, there was an increase in absorbed energy too. So although we can see all of those things here, it's a great idea to look at the, the graph to get some data about that. Okay, so now it's your turn to go explore the sim. You're going to run eight tests, one for each of the four gases where you increase the parts per million to 500, and then the other tests where you decrease it down to zero parts per million. Record each one. You can just write down some notes, maybe in like a notebook or something like that, and then come back to this video and we'll take a look at some of our data together. Okay, we have a lot of data to look at, and if you've just explored this, compare what you observed in the sim with the screenshots that are on these next few slides. So on the left side, it has gas increased, and you can see because the toggle is all the way up at 500 parts per million. And on the right side, it has gas decreased, and you can see that the toggle is all the way down to zero parts per million. And if you look at the, the two screenshots, you can see there's a lot of differences. In the one on the left, almost all the ice has retreated and the surface of the Earth is glowing to show a lot of absorbed energy. You can also see the results for that in the graph. And so what we found when we increased carbon dioxide is that the temperature increased, the energy absorbed increased, and the amount of ice decreased. And we found that the opposite was true when we did carbon dioxide and we decreased it. The temperature decreased and the energy absorbed decreased. But the ice increased. So there's definitely a connection with the ice decreasing when the temperature increases, or if the temperature decreases and gets cold, the ice expands. That definitely makes sense when I think about when I've seen ice melt before. Okay, so here is a screenshot of methane, and we can see it behaved very similarly to carbon dioxide. When we increase the methane gas, both the temperature and the energy absorbed increased, but the amount of ice retreated significantly. When we decreased the methane gas, both the temperature and the energy absorbed also decreased, but the amount of ice increased. Okay, the next gas that we looked at is sulfur dioxide. When we increased sulfur dioxide, something different happened than the first two tests. The, the ice actually expanded quite a lot more. So the temperature and the energy absorbed decreased, but the amount of ice increased. So with the gas when we decreased it, we saw that the energy absorbed and the temperature both increased and the amount of ice actually went down and decreased. So then our fourth test we did was nitrogen dioxide. And with nitrogen dioxide, well, something different happened with this gas. We, we didn't see any change in the temperature and the amount of energy absorbed or in the amount of ice changing. And so what we saw is that Nitrogen dioxide does not seem to be affecting um, climate change on our planet. This data is all so interesting. We've learned a lot in this lesson. In fact, we have discovered a brand new key concept. So this key concept says, when the amount of carbon dioxide and, or methane in the atmosphere changes, the amount of energy absorbed by the surface also changes. So when we adjust those two gases, we do see that there's a change in the amount of energy. We should break it down a tiny bit more because specifically when you increase carbon dioxide or methane gas, we also see that the energy absorbed and the temperature also increase. So there's a connection there. And when the amount of carbon dioxide or methane goes down or decreases, we actually see that the amount of energy absorbed on the surface also goes down. So we don't know everything yet. We don't have the complete story of what's happening on our planet right now that's causing the ice to melt, but we have a few more clues. We know that there are some, some things that can happen on the sim with methane gas or carbon dioxide, but let's look at some actual data from scientists that we've been collecting over the last century about the different amounts of these gases in the atmosphere, and we'll see if there's a connection with how the ice has changed or the temperatures that we've also recorded. So we'll do that in the next lesson. We'll look at some data, we'll make some conclusions, but we should celebrate right now that we've discovered a new concept. This is exciting stuff. I'll see you next time.